In today's video, I'll be showing you the easiest way you can integrate the GitHub REST API inside of your React project. And by the end of this tutorial, you'll have a React project where it will display your GitHub avatar image, your GitHub username, and the number of public repos as well. And once you click on this list my repos run, it'll actually list all of your public repos that you have on your GitHub profile. And if you click on any of the GitHub links, it'll bring you to that specific GitHub repo on your GitHub profile. And so to begin, I'll go ahead and just switch over to my IDE. I'll be using Visual Studio Code in this example. And just before we begin, I just want to state that I assume you have a basic understanding of React. This tutorial will be more focused on the uh, GitHub REST API aspect and being able to get data back from that. And if you're not too familiar with React, don't worry, I will upload this code so you can just follow along uh, during this tutorial. So now for the first step, we'll go ahead and create a very basic React project using the create React command. And to do that, we just have to go ahead and open up our integrated terminal and just type in npx create react app followed by the project name. And so I'll just use something basic like GitHub API tutorial and go ahead and click enter. And I just see this process begin. And I'll resume the video once this project is done being built. And once the project is done being built, you see a screen very similar to this where it says we just need, now need to switch into the folder and run npm start in order to run the project. So let's go ahead and do that just to make sure everything got built correctly. So I'm going to switch into my folder and run npm start. And now as you can see, we have a basic React application started. And now that the project is running successfully, let's go ahead and go back to the code. And before we begin, let's go ahead and stop the project. And let's go ahead and install Bootstrap, which is just a UI framework that will allow us to more easily make UI changes later in this tutorial. So to install Bootstrap, just go ahead and copy this command that I have here, which is npm install react bootstrap, uh, bootstrap at 5.1.3, and go ahead and click enter. And I'll resume the video once it's done installing. And once Bootstrap is done installing, let's go ahead and go to our index file to add the Bootstrap CDN link. And we can do that by going to the public folder and then going to index.html. And once you get to this page, we'll go ahead and just go to the React Bootstrap documentation. And if you go here, you scroll down and we'll see that there's a link that we just need to copy here. And once you copy it, go ahead and go back to the, your IDE. And anywhere inside this index file, go ahead and just paste the link. And go ahead and save the file. And now we can go ahead and start editing the code for the main homepage of the React application. And we can do that by going back to source and going to app.js. And here, this is what we saw earlier, but now we can remove pretty much everything um, in this header tag. And if you haven't already, go ahead and run your React application just so we can see the changes as we make them. And so after making our changes, our React application just be a blank screen like this. And so the first changes we'll be making are just adding the bootstrap components that we're going to be using. And we're mainly just going to be using the card component that they have. And so if we switch back to the React bootstrap documentation and we just go to components and then we go to cards, we can just copy the example that they have here and just by hitting this copy button here. And now we can just switch back to the IDE and go ahead and just paste it here. And if we save it, we're going to get some errors because we need to make the correct imports. And we can do that by going back to the documentation and just going to the API over here on the right hand side and just copying the import code right here. And let's go ahead and just paste it up here. And we're going to have to do that a couple of times for different components, but we're missing the button component. So I'm just going to go ahead and just modify the existing card component import to adjust for the button component and go ahead and click save. And now if we go back to the React project, we should see now we have a card tile here. And so the next thing I want to do is just go ahead and just like vertically and horizontally center it so it's in the center of the page. And we can do that by going back to the IDE. And then where we have class name app, I'm going to go ahead and add some bootstrap specific classes that will make it so it's like vertically and horizontally aligned. And so don't worry if you don't know what this means, you can look it up later, but I'm going to go ahead and just add them now. So the first thing we're going to do is make the width 100% as well as the height. And then add uh, two other classes that will center them. So the first one would be justify content center and the other one would be align item center. And there's one more I forgot to add and that's just deflex or basically applying the display flex property to this entire div. And once you have it like this, if we go back to a React application, you can now see it's perfectly vertically centered as well as horizontally centered. And now for the next part of the video, I'll be going over how we can connect the GitHub API and retrieve data from it. 
So we can do that by going back to the IDE. And here we're going to be using a React hook called use effect that will allow us to run code as soon as the page is initialized. So to start, we'll go ahead and import it from React. So go up here and do import use effect from React. And now we can go ahead and use it here. So just type in the code exactly how I have it. And make sure to add an empty array. And now anytime we have code here, it will run every time the application starts. So I'll just do a console like 10 just to make sure. And if we go ahead and save it and then go back to the React application, refresh it and look at the console, we should now see that 10 got printed. And so in this block of code, we're just going to be uh, making the GitHub REST API call so that each time the application starts, it will automatically grab our GitHub profile data. And so just to save time, I'll be copying the code that we need here. I'll make sure to put this code in the description as well, but go ahead and just copy as you see here. And this will basically make a GitHub REST API call to whatever GitHub profile username that you have here. So this will retrieve all the publicly available GitHub data related to my profile. And because I'm console logging the data on line 13, if we go back to our React application and refresh the page, you can see this is all the data that we get back from the GitHub REST API. And we would now be using this data in order to display our avatar image, the number of public repos we have, as well as get like the repo links as well. And so to start this process, let's go back to our IDE and we're going to use another React hook called useState. And I'm not going to go into details about useState, but it will basically allow us to update this state within our React application. So to start, we're going to go ahead and just import it. It's called useState. So to start, I'll go ahead and paste the code that we need for the avatar URL, just like this. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and store the avatar URL once we get it back from our GitHub REST API call. And we can just do it like this, where now we're setting the avatar URL to the uh, avatar URL image that we get back from the API call. And just to be super clear why I'm naming this result that avatar URL is because we're naming the result that we get back from the REST API call as result. And then we're doing dot avatar URL because if we go back to our API response, avatar URL is the name of the field that we get from the GitHub REST API call. So we'll be doing this for the rest of the data that we were working with, such as our like GitHub username, which is the login field, as well as the number of public repos we have here. So whatever the field name that we get back from the API response is the field name that we're going to be using. And so now we're storing the result that we get back into this avatar URL. So down here under source for the image, we can go ahead and replace it with avatar, uh, avatar URL and hit save. And now if we go back to our React project, we can now see that the image that's being displayed is our GitHub avatar URL image. And we're going to pretty much just repeat the same pattern for the rest of the data that we want to get. So I'll start by getting our GitHub username. So if we go back to the IDE, we're going to go ahead and just make another like variable for that. So I'll just do GitHub username and then set GitHub username. And if we go back down here to line 17, we can do the same thing where we set the GitHub username and the result is going to be called login to get our GitHub username. And now uh, we can go ahead and replace the card title with the GitHub username. And if we switch back to the React project, now you can see this is my GitHub username here. And now we can work on the part where we add the button to list our public repos. So if I switch back to my IDE, we can go ahead and just remove this card text and then replace this text that says list my public repos. And now just to save time, I'm going to go ahead and uh, paste this other function that we need to get our GitHub data related to our repos. And you can just copy exactly how you see it here. And just to briefly go over what this does, we're going to go ahead and just make another uh, API call to the GitHub profile API and retrieve just the information about our repos. And once we get our result back, we're going to go ahead and just iterate through all the repos that we own and then render them onto the screen, like inside of this div, as you can see here. And on line 20, we have an anchor tag where the name is the GitHub repo name and it will link to the GitHub repo URL. And we get all of this data back from the GitHub REST API call. And also we need to add another variable for the repo data that we get back from the GitHub REST API. So I'm just gonna do that real quick. And now we just need to add the onClick handler for the button so that it will uh, run this function each time it's clicked. So we just go down back to our button. We can just do onClick 
and then just make sure you have curly braces and go ahead and just copy this function name, which I just called uh, repo data URL. And now if we go back to our uh, project after hitting save, um, sorry, I, I mistyped this. It should be set repo data like what we have in the code. And once you've done that, go ahead and go back to our Chrome uh, tab. And now if we click on the list my public repos, you should see that the public repos for your GitHub profile are now all being printed to the console. So now if we want them to display on the actual page, if we go back to the IDE, and what we need to do is go down to this return statement and just go ahead and just add um, the variable for the repo data. So we just call it repo data and save. And also, actually, we need to add one more class here. And it'll just be flex column and hit save. And now if we go back to our React project and refresh the page and click list my public repos, you can now see that we have all of our public repos being displayed in a list. And if we click on any of these links, it will bring us directly to that GitHub project on GitHub itself. And that is pretty much the entire tutorial of how to use the GitHub REST API within your React application. Hopefully everything made sense. And now you will understand how to use like any GitHub REST API calls within your React project. And if you want to display your own GitHub profile, we can switch back to the code. And so for example, if we switch the profile name here, so if you use something like Octocat, which is GitHub's uh, own profile, I believe, and hit save, and we go back to it. You can now see it shows a different image, and if we list all the public repos, it's all the public repos for this Octocat GitHub profile. I hope you enjoyed this video. I did my best to make it as concise and easy to follow as possible. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment, and I'll do my best to get back to you. And if you found this video helpful in any way, please like the video, and don't forget to subscribe for more content.